Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, before we have our seat, I would love us once again to really appreciate our host in the conference, Pastor Koja and Pastor Toy. Glory to God. Please, why are you standing? Um, and I will tell you why I wanted to appreciate them. Um, just in case you do not know, building conference that doesn't just build your church costs a lot of money. And only God can really reward this investment. Only God can do that because majority of us ministers from other churches, other ministries, and we're just here, just drinking. And this impact is profound. There's hardly any place I would go to and there'll be not someone that said, oh, you know, um, there's a conference in your country called Wafbeck. There's um, Wafbeck now, you know, that will say Wafbeck. And it's just glorious. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Can we pray together? And Father, we thank you. We thank you because everything is planned out already. And we have just come to drink from the river. We ask as the word of God has been thought, the ministry and the power of the spirit will be made available. So much so that questions in the heart of people will be answered. Mindset will be shifted. Assurance will come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We we'll thank you and thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please you may have your seats. Praise the Lord. I'm so grateful to be here. It's nice to see Pastor Tony again. Um, Pastor Tony and I, long, long way. The first time I saw her, I saw her praying and worshiping. The first time I saw her in my entire life, and which was maybe, maybe close to 20, maybe 20 years, I saw her praying and worshiping at the chapel. That's the first time I ever saw her. And I walked back and said, who is this lady that is praying and worshiping? That's the, that's the first memory I had about her. And... Um, I remember I came to see Pastor Kwaju many years ago, and I was very, I was very touched. They had just come on television, how someone could combine theology and intelligence and practical application. I was like, ooh. And I remembered I came to, it was at Yab at that time, and I saw him. Praise God. All right. I will talk to us briefly about a burning in my heart. And I'm going to talk to us about applying your faith for intervention. Applying your faith for intervention. I started out in ministry as an evangelist. And I have a lot of flair. I'm very concerned about people that are far from Christ. I'm extremely concerned about them. And somehow, the Lord put me in the pastoral ministry also. And as a pastor, one of the things I noticed, if you're a pastor for a while... You will come across people, and they will come in cycles, that will say something like, I've been serving God all my life, and there's nothing to show for it. I will see people that say that, oh, you know, sometimes people will travel. People will tell you that, oh, I was in Kenny Higgins' cast meeting. I, I did this and did this. But, you know, I've grown past those things. And you would, when they talk to you, what you really sense is the disappointment that the message does not work. And they will begin to explain to you that something happened in their health and it didn't work. Something happened in their finance and it didn't work. And when you listen to them, you know, let me say this quickly to balance everything. Every dimension of breakthrough has two parts. And that's why God gave us two legs. One leg is a supernatural leg in which you stand on. The second leg is a natural leg in which you stand on. There will be natural principles you will practice that will help you go forward. But have you ever tried to stay on one leg before? What will happen is that you will find yourself tumbling from the top into the bottom. And what happens is that most times people take the supernatural leg and they are doing something consistent and spiritual. But what they have to do in the natural is not being done. Glory to God. So I, I became very concerned. I, be, I became very concerned. I became very concerned. And let's read the scripture. Let me build some foundation here. Proverbs chapter 13 in verse 12. Proverbs chapter 13 in verse 12. 
The Bible says that hope deferred maketh the heart sick. And this is how you understand it. So they are saying that I'm a minister of the gospel. I've really believed. I've engaged the principles of faith. I'm trying to see our ministry expand its reach. I'm trying to see our ministry grow in terms of finances. I've done everything I can. But there is no change. Sometimes it's someone... It's a Christian businessman that is wondering that every year I do just 10 million per annum. And I'm critically praying that the impossible will happen. And the impossible in this situation is that the person will move from a 10 million annual income to a 25 million annual income. But they've been on that trajectory for maybe 10 years. It could be a pastor that is pastoring a church and is wondering, I've done everything possible. We have just not grown beyond 200. All of these cases are examples of people that need an intervention. That need an intervention. When do you need an intervention? When there is no one to help. The Bible says that Daniel got into trouble with the king. And he ended up in the lion's den. I don't know if I've gotten in trouble with governmental powers before. And everyone you talk to wants to stay out of it. And the reason I'm sharing this is that the team of the conference, Mountain Moving Faith, in parenthesis, doing the impossible. Intervention inquires that the power of God will move into a situation and the impossible will be achieved. The second, the second time you need the intervention is this. When you are out of time and resources, sometimes it's, you know, you know the story that comes to mind is the story of Peter when he was sinking in water. If Jesus did not come at that time, Peter would have gone up, down, 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 and gone totally into water. And that's why you need intervention. The third time you need intervention is this. When you have big dreams, and you know that you can't help yourself. Ezra and Nehemiah a classic example of people that had big dreams, and they know they couldn't help themselves. The fourth time you need intervention is when you have done everything. And I don't know if you're like me, when you have done everything. It's possible that you've done everything you know. You've done everything. And maybe that's why you're here. You're like, Lord, I just need to know what to do because everything I know, I've done. And the last time you need intervention is this. When you have thoroughly messed up and all you need is that the mercy of God will override judgment in your favor. And there's a powerful scripture, I think, in the book of Psalms. I will par- just paraphrase. It said, Lord, thank you for holding me. For when I fall, it's you that doesn't make me fall down flat totally. I, I love the way the psalmist puts it. He says, when I fall, because I'm human, I will fall. But your mercy holds me so that I don't fall down totally. Glory to God. Act chapter 12. And this is where I will center on. Act chapter 12. Act chapter 12. The Bible says now from verse 1. The Bible says now about this time. Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. It's amazing that what was recorded in scriptures. Was Herod the king stretched forth his hand. Because if you are sensitive, you will have understood. And that translation said, Herod stretched forth his hand to harass the church. It wasn't Herod just harassing the church. That harassment was a motivation of demonic powers. And the reason why I'm saying so is this. If you want to really know, demonic manifestations are very hard to see. That's why the devil is described as a serpent. It takes people that have very good intuition and discernment to know that this is the devil at work. Because most of the time, people say, demons and demons, I understand what is going on. The Bible says the devil walks like a serpent, very unseen. The, no, the reason why that the more he hides, the more you can't rebuke him. I, I, you know, so, so, some time ago, I walked into a house and my, my wife had gotten this person to help us and they were going through some interview process. So as I walked in, I just asked my wife, I said, who is he? He said, oh, we're trying to engage him in the house to help us with this. And of course, as I came inside, I looked into his eyes and I sensed a demonic presence. And I just called my wife. I said, let me just talk to you. I said, just to let you know, he's demon possessed. How you want to manage that, it's left to you. 
I, I said, just to let you know. Master, what did you see? I said, I've seen it. I said, just to let you know he's demon-possessed, how you want to ma- manage that is left to you. The reason why I'm saying so is that certain things will come normal can be an orchestration of demonic influence. You will not even know that the things you hear, that information was designed by Satan for you to hear to feel a certain way. Look at Peter. Peter only said, God forbid, you will not go to the cross. Jesus left to us, it was good advice. But Jesus says, the demonic influence in that conversation. Remember that few verses before time, he had spoken by the Spirit of God. In the same tone, he had moved from power into darkness. And sometimes you must be careful. Because there are people that genuinely love you. And when Satan cannot get to you, it gets into them and begin to give advice from a place of love, but thoroughly influenced by demonic powers. The Bible says this, and he killed James, the brother of John. I, I wish I had the time to explain why it was J- James he picked. And the Bible says he killed James, the brother of John. And because it saw, it pleased the Jews. Wow. He proceeded further to take Peter. And this is it. Every time Satan takes something and is unresisted, it comes back to take more. So you run a ministry, you just notice that in the space of a month, three people died. Ah. Pastor, you will get up. Ah, you just notice that January, no sales. February, no sales. You will get up. Because whatever you don't resist remains. Whatever you don't confront settles. Whatever you don't resist remains. Whatever you don't confront settles. The church thought, you know, it's coincidental, you know, this and this and this is happening. And before you know it, James. Then he took Peter. And when he took Peter, I love what the Bible says. He put him in prison. Uh, he put him in prison. I'm going to jump just because of time. The Bible now begins to tell us in verse 5. And Herod, in verse 6 rather, and Herod will have brought him for the same night. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bounding with two chains, and the keeper between the doors kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came. And this is where intervention comes in. This is where intervention comes in. The angel of the Lord came upon him and lighted and light shine in the prison and smote Peter on the side and raised him up and said, Arise up quickly. And his change fell off. What is that? Did you notice that metal responded to words? Did you notice it was metal, not spiritual chains? The Bible says, As the angel said, Arise, that the chains fell off. There are words, and this is a power. As you speak words, it affects realms, dimensions, both physical and dimensions that are not tangible. The Bible says this, and the angel said unto him, guide thyself, put on the sandals. And so he did and said unto him, cast the garment upon thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true. Neither, and wist not that it was true, what was done was true by the angel, but thought he was he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second word, they came into the iron gate, which lead into the city, which opened to them of their own accord. There are times that God will touch people to open doors for you. There are times that the superior miracle is that as you approach the door, the door will open. It says, and when Peter came to himself in verse 11, I know of a shorty that the Lord has sent his angel and that de- watch this now. I know the shorty that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and of the expectation, just that, that spiritual warfare right there, and of the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered this thing, it came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mary, and they were gathered together. As Peter knocked at the door, a damsel came to hack. A damsel came to hack it, named Rhoda. Long and short, long and short. We, the, we're familiar with the story. The Bible says they were all praying. Then Peter came and knocked on the door, and Rhoda heard. Then Rhoda came to tell them and said, "Excuse me, Peter is at the door." And they all said, "Excuse me, are you mad? Peter is in prison." I want to ask you a question. Why were they praying? 
So a lot of people pray, but pray in unbelief. The, there's something about the one that prays in faith that makes them be able to position and see the answers to the prayer. That was why out of all of them, it was only Rhoda that heard that Peter was there. So why am I saying these things? As we talk about intervention, why is intervention important to every one of us? The first reason is this. Everyone needs something that can tell you personally that God is real. I will never forget in my life. And these are things that shaped my Christian experience. 1993, Deeper Christian Life Ministry, WF Kumui had a crusade. It was called Powers of Old. Does, does anybody remember that crusade? If you remember, see, just let me see. Powers of Old. And he had declared that whatever thing that happened, that this was the retreat. I remember that I went for that retreat. And in those days, you know, there's no streaming like this. What he does is that he either preaches in one main retreat, then he will send the cassettes to the brand churches. And I remember that in the brand churches, as we sat and they played the cassette, <laughs> as he played the cassette, he just said, today is not close eye miracle. Those that were there will remember this conversation. He said, today is not close eye miracle. He said, if you are blind, if you are lame, if you are crippled, come to the aisle. He said, I want everybody to look at you as I pray for you. He said, I want everybody to look at you as I pray for you. In my own center, there was a man that had hunchback. As he prayed, the way the hunchback disappeared. I don't know. All I know was that I sat on the floor and was crying. If you can use someone like this, you can use me. The reason why I'm saying so is that the most important miracle is your first. Because if you can have a testimony that God did it for you, no matter what you go through, there's a reference point. That's why he told the children of Israel, he said, take the stones from Jordan so that you can have a reference point that God can do it again. When you say that, listen to me, when you go through a tough time and you say, I don't know if God can do it, I understand why you don't know God can do it. Because you have never seen him do something before. If you've seen him do something before, you cannot deny yourself that I've seen the power of God. That's why you must have your own personal encounter. And that's why interventions are very important. Glory to God. And you must remember this. The purpose of miracles and intervention, it's more than God meeting a need, it's because God wants to open your mindset. How do I know that? The Bible says, when it was, it says, beware of the living of the Pharisee. And the disciples said, is it because we have no bread? And Jesus Christ said, why are you thinking on a low level? That did you not consider, consider means, did you not allow the fact that I multiply bread enter your mind? That you can never lack bread before. So the first miracle was that I multiplied the bread. The second miracle was that your mind should shift. He said the first miracle was that I multiplied the bread. The second miracle that your mind should shift. So when God does something for you, it's not the miracle itself. It's that it's trying to expand your mind. Unfortunately, a lot of us have not allowed the miraculous to upgrade our mindset. So we're like someone that has iPhone, but your iPhone is iPhone 7. Listen to me, we're in iPhone 14 right now. iPhone 15 right now. So you're wondering that, ah, everybody's iPhone has better pictures. Everybody's iPhone is doing this. Why is my iPhone not doing that? Because you have not upgraded. But the beauty of this kind of conference is that you will hear words, you will hear teachings, you will have encounters. And let me say something to you. The way my ministry works, as I'm ministering to you right now, there are operations of the Spirit going on. Even tonight as you sleep, you will see the manifestation of the power of God. It was given to me. I didn't ask for it. Glory to God. So what I'm saying to you is that the purpose of the miraculous, this is intervention, is that you can open it up. You know, there's a way you are experiencing financial blessing. When you have a financial challenge, it's true there's a challenge, but you're not perplexed because God has done so many in time past. And what God has done in time past gives you a reference point, but what God has done in time past also expands your mind. Look at your neighbor and say, you need, your mind needs to be expanded. Uh, have you ever wanted a child to do something and the child likes food? You say, come, Junior. You give him one tiny piece of chocolate and say, take it. When you finish your food, 
come back here the kind of desire he did not have before for that chocolate you will have it what god does many of you have not entered that level though. what god does is he makes you taste it so that you can be like ah this thing is happening so that you can pursue glory to god so what is intervention that we're causing you what is intervention what is intervention i just gave you a story of intervention what is intervention <laughs> please let me pass my ball i'm a bit animated where's my ball just come with me can i get somebody else just one more person to join maybe one of the protocol you can call yes i want to throw the ball to him but no matter what i do make sure it doesn't get to him. move back this is intervention watch intervention intervention is that it should be going to somebody else the power of god stops holds it and pass it to you that's intervention it, it should be it should be going see I, I'm, I'm saying okay I, I, it's catching it so the first thing about intervention is this intervention talks about interruption question why couldn't the king sleep because of Mordecai intervention sir intervention sir and, and some of you this is this is the key it's intervention it's something that you need intervention is God stepping into something in the fullness of his grace and power oh glory to God Oh, glory to God. The second thing about intervention is this. The first one is what? Interruption. The second one is orchestration. Orchestration is when God now takes seats and removes it and says, put it at your leg. And you wonder, why did you walk into the conversation? There's a testimony. A lady was sharing the testimony on, on our prayer platform. And she said this. She said, thank you for leading me in prayers. And said, my friend had a job interview and she didn't have a car so she asked me to drive out there he said that day i didn't know why i drove out there i drove out there and she said please wait for me at the reception so i can take me back home he said as i was waiting the reception and they were interviewing her one interviewers came out and said oh are you the next person he said no i only brought my friend here and the other said, don't you have a job that you're bringing your friend in working hour he said i don't have a job he said why don't you apply he said because because I didn't even know when the, when the process started. But I said, don't worry, I will, I will interview you. You know what happened eventually? The girl they drove there did not get the job. The person that drove them there got the job. That is what I mean by what? Inter Somebody shout intervention. And the reason I'm saying so today is that you will know something. This year will be full of intervention for you. I, I love the way the Bible says it. He says, I will overturn and overturn and overturn. He says, I will overturn and overturn and overturn. I say, God is overturning and overturning and overturning in your favor in the name of Jesus. Intervention talks about orchestration. How do you explain the fishes in Luke chapter 5? Where did the fish come from? From the spirit realm. They were not there all through the night. But as soon as Jesus spoke the word, the intervention, the intervening power of God stepped into the scene. And all of a sudden, all the fish gathered there. Praise God. Hallelujah. All the fish gathered there. And the reason I'm saying so is that some of you genuinely, You've tried your best, but your best is not good enough. And some of you, there's just a gap. There's just a gap in the documentation. There's just a gap in knowledge. There's just something that you have not reached. And we're saying the power of God can cover between here and between there. And that is what will make you do the impossible. We are, uh, listen to me, we are a people of the miraculous. You must not forget that. We are a people of the miraculous. The power of the spirit lies in our spirit. We can produce signs and wonders. It is our calling. Ooh. Thank you. 
two more things about intervention intervention talks about influence 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 there are two scriptures that you will make you understand this the bible says this the effect of having power of a righteous man produces what power makes power available but the bible also says in the day of his power his people shall be willing so the question is this how do people become willing People become willing as we produce power in prayer. So what happens is this, and this is very powerful. Let's say that you have maybe a proposal. You know, or, or maybe you are trying to have an outreach and power not coming. As you begin to pray, the willingness of people to respond to you is amplified. But there's a, there, I'll give an example. Maybe... You submitted your FAFA and approval somewhere. Or maybe, yeah, you submitted FAFA and approval somewhere. And when you submitted the file, the nature of the person submitted to didn't want to work on what you submitted. So what happened is this, just going around, and it just forget the file. And it's two days, it's two or two days or two weeks old. One day, as it was there, his child played into his study. As the child played into the study, the child picked up your phone. He thought it was something to play. And said, Daddy, this is this. Daddy, this is it. Then the man says, that's true. I promised this guy I'll look into his case. It's two weeks now. I didn't even do that. Thank God that my child brought it. The child did not bring it. It was the influence of angelic power that made the child do that. You will just notice that your name will come to people's mind at the right time. How many of you have explained what I'm talking about? Your name will just pop up in your mind. I, I mean, I had a testimony of someone. It's a, the movie, they are movie producers. They were in debt of several hundreds of millions. They could not pick up the phone again. Hundreds of millions. She said a testimony. said, what happened is this. It says someone that we met eight years ago just told us that a certain, gov- a certain person wants to run for a governor office. And we did just a tiny job because that was the seed. And we didn't charge too much. He told the governor that, I know some people, they are not popular, but they can really do this job. Long and short, they got the job. The lady said, when she told me, I thought I was dreaming. I met her somewhere in Nikoi. We drove to the house of the person in Nikoi. They, first, they opened back and gave us money. He said, the first interment wiped out our debts away. Intervention. Ha. Huh. Someone says, I've been chasing him, chasing him, chasing him, chasing him. Hey, stop chasing him. Release the power. He said, in the day of his power, his people shall be willing. You are talking too much to the investors. You are looking, there's too much of, there's too much of this on social media. You need to go. As you are doing that, the power of God is released. The reason I'm saying so is that this is what I have experienced. And what happened in intervention is exactly what happens in, with, with willingness is what happened to Dockers. Where the Bible says, and God opened our hearts. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So we're going to come to the very practical side that exactly how do I apply my faith for intervention? How exactly do I do that? The first thing I want to note is this. Intervention is connected to supplications. That's the first principle. Did you notice an intervention is connected to supplication? Many talk prayer, but few pray. You need to decide, are you a prayer or a player? It's a decision. Am I a prayer, a person that prays, or am I a player? In- intervention is connected to supplications. 
and that supplication is either done directly by the person that needs intervention as in the case of Daniel Daniel needed intervention the Lord had given a specific word about what about the nation that not come to pass so Daniel himself went for inter intervention through supplication but you can also get intervention through indirect supplication where someone else is standing in the gap for you and that's what we see in the case of Peter did you notice Peter was just there just there just there just there just there but what happened was that there were people praying there was a roader can I be honest with you some of you if you want to be fair and honest you are here because of the prayer of your mother I I'm telling you some things happen in your life you look right you look left you say ah they prayed for me ah they prayed for me you know that they prayed for you you know that they prayed for you that is the power of intercession intercession is a power that does not make you stumble are you here so intervention is connected to supplication and, and look at this and, and and when I just want to put this here as an extra this is not my message but I just put it as an extra please every time you are praying indirectly for people learn to pray that the Lord will have mercy on them and the reason why is that when it comes to the principle of faith remember that the will of the person takes a paramount toll on it I remember that brother Hagen had gone to pray for someone and when he prayed the healing power of God went back into his hands and Kadegin said that there are certain choices and he knew the man was going to die and he said there are certain choices that this man has made and what had said that cannot be reversed at this time you know why I'm saying so notice this in the ministry of Jesus most of the time that someone else was healed by proxy the prayer was always have mercy he said my daughter is vexed have mercy the woman she was praying for her daughter she came on the platform of mercy and the reason why that is important is that there are intricacies involved in that thing you will never know are you here so the first thing we learned about intervention that intervention is connected to supplication the second thing is this intervention is connected to what God said And I'm going to, yeah, intervention is connected to what God said. What God said in the, in, the, in the prophetic book of the Bible, or what God has quickened to you personally. So Daniel went back to God in prayer and said, based on what you have said. Paul told Timothy, make warfare according to the prophecy that have gone ahead of you. Let me tell you the danger. I, would, I, want, I want to... The danger of praying without the word is really large. Um, where, where's that my sister that helped me? Yeah. Oh, can you someone give me a ring? Like just a ring? Yeah. An engagement ring maybe. An engagement ring is better. An engagement ring. Yeah. Yeah. It can. Yeah. Or oh, you can come with it, my sister. It, can you come up this? Is that okay with you? Yeah, you can come with it. It's okay. She's married, so this does not apply to her. You know, she's married. You know she's married when you were single and you were given an engagement ring you were given this ring there were times you didn't even feel as if you had someone in your life did you feel it all the time that I have someone when you were single when you were just engaged did you feel like this all the time not that, that way but guess what happened I want to show you something most times when people are engaged and they feel lonely you know what they do they will look at the ring and just touch it where are all the engaged people here you know what I'm talking about they will look at the ring and just feel it who knows what I'm talking about the reason I'm saying this this is what the Word of God does for you when you pray when you are praying you are full of faith but when you enter a situation and you don't feel it is the word you go back and start feeling you'll go back and start feeling you because it's not every time you'll be prayed up and be like oh one back will be over by Sunday the reality comes in what you go back to the, they call the ring a promissory what ring 
It's the promise of God. You go back and say, Lord, I don't know what is going on, but there's something I want to hold on to. The danger of those that pray without the word is this. There will be nothing to hold on to. Glory to God. So intervention is connected to what God said. Why? So as the first thing why you have to pray with the word. The second thing is this. This is what the word does in you. Everyone look at me. When you have gone through a tough time in sickness, when you have gone through a tough time in being single, not married, if you have gone through a tough time, the ministry is not growing, or certain results you have is not happening, let me tell you what happens naturally. Naturally, your mind will shrink and adjust to that physical state. When you begin to meditate on God's word, you will extend the borders of your mind to accommodate change and the miraculous. You will extend the borders of my mind, your mind. I was ministering to single ladies. I had the program, I think ladies are over 40 or something like that. And I was praying for them. And I told them something. The only ghost did not tell me, I told them. I said, all of you, this weekend, go into a bridal store. Tell them that you want to test their wedding gowns and wear it. I knew what I was trying to do. I knew that the mindset was stuck. Some of them were praying, but they could not see it. One of the ladies came back and said, when they gave me the wedding gown to try on, he said, as soon as I tried it on, I broke down in tears and I said, I can't. But she had been praying. The reason why is that her mind could not accommodate it. That was why the angel told Mary, what I'm telling you, you cannot accommodate. Go and connect with someone that has a testimony so that you can believe and you can what? You can conceive what I'm doing. Someone says, ah, I'm praying for 100 million. Let me be honest with you. You don't have 10 million. Do you know what 100 million is? So, and that's why even if the 100 million hits you, you say, ah, you will misbehave first. You will not begin to ask eh, what is wrong with the Christian going to club. You, you, and the reason why is that that miracle is beyond your capacity. You will become a prodigal son after the part on the prodigal son. But this is why you need the word. This is why you need the word. You need the word stored in your spirit so that your capacity on the inside can be expanded. It can be expanded because, oh my God, because the word of God has transformational power. It says, as we behold in, in the mirror, hey, the glory of God, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. From glory to glory. I, I look at the mirror from glory to glory. I look at the mirror from glory to glory. I look at the mirror from glory to glory. Wow. So two steps about intervention. The first thing is this. It's connected to supplications. And it's connected to the word. The word is what the Lord says. And what the spirit of God quickens inside you. And the way to get the word of God quickened inside you is this. You will take the, you will take the written word. You will meditate in it over and over and over. Until something breaks on the inside. There's a popular story of Bishop Bidipo. Bishop says, I can never be poor. I've had people say so and became poorer. <laughs> and the reason why is that the power of that statement is not in this statement. Yes. Listen to me. If you keep saying, I can never be poor and not do what you do, you'll be poorer. <laughs> the reason why is that you are like the seven sons of Skiva. They've learned the outward decoration of manifestation. But the power within is absent. When Bishop said I can never be poor, it was from the three days of what? Of meditating the word of God. He didn't hear somebody say it. It came out of the spirit. And that became his reality. Glory to God. The way you will know that your change is coming is that two things. Number one, your mindset will change and your emotion will have peace. 
you know, the old Pentecostal says, you pray until you have peace. What will happen is this. There will be harmony within, within. In your dimensions of soul and spirit, there will be harmony. You just know it's done. 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 Someone says that, okay, so when others are getting their miracles, what should I do? First of all, if you have that peace, it will comfort you. But the second thing you must realize is this. Because some people, the problem is not, the, the reason why they fret is comparison. They were okay when nobody was married. When nobody among their pastor friend had their own church location, they were okay. But the moment one pastor friend built a building, then they lost focus. And comparison became something the devil used to attack them. Oh my God. You know what you have to do? This is just extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. Every time it's happening for other people and it's not happening for you, remind yourself, when Jesus Christ broke bread and fed the 5,000, everybody got bread. Yes or no? Yes. But they didn't get it at the same time. Remember, everybody will get bread. They will not just get what? At the same time. The thinking is this. A bread has started from that area. It will not finish. Because in God's kingdom, there's no scarcity. There's over, over. There's supply. It will come into my turn. So if you see that your friend dancing like this on a wedding, don't say, God, why? God, when me? God, this. Say, Father, I thank you that you are faithful. You are just, you are merciful. The same way you did it for Venezuela, you did it for her, you will do it for what? For me. And you tell yourself, the bread will come. We will not get at the same time, but everybody will get bread. My time is running. I want to... Oh, thank you, Lord. Let me share some scriptures that can help you with intervention. Some scriptures. You know, I talk about praying with God. Some scriptures that can help you with intervention. Judges chapter 5 verse 20. If you need intervention in your health, maybe the doctor said you have cancer. A caposa santa le. <laughs> See what the Bible says. Or maybe there's a conspiracy against you. The Bible says when they were in battle... He says, they fought from heaven. He said, they fought from heaven. He said, they saw them killing them. They could not see what was touching them. He said, they fought from He said, the stars in their courses above against Sicilia. That's intervention. When angels, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Silamando, Paleande, Silamando, Peredusque, Engasco, Sigento, Prodiso, Paleco, Monto, Vresia, Lamante. For I'm calling my people to come up, to come up in their thinking, to come up in their thinking, to come up in my thinking. For there is much more, says the Holy Ghost, Sindo, Pena, Vilo, Coro, Siata. For there is much more, there is much more, says the Spirit. He said, I'm calling you to come up. I'm challenging you to do the impossible because this is your calling. Says the Spirit of grace and supplication. Someone, you're, you're definitely one of your ears. Your ears just popped open. There's someone, there's an issue with your spine. You've just been hit by the power of the Lord. The arthritis you came here with has just been healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet, everyone. Oh, glory to God. The anointing of the Spirit of God is here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's soon take up. Jeremiah chapter 47, verse 6. While we're standing, I said, I want to give you maybe just two. I've given you one. Two scriptures on intervention. Can we read together? Can we read together? 
Is it okay? One to go. O thou sword of the Lord, how long will you thou be quiet? Put thyself into this cavern. Rest and be still. Verse 7. Verse 7. He said, how can he be quiet? Seeing that the Lord has given it a charge against Asklon, against the seashore. There had he appointed it. He said the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God, cannot be quiet. It must go into action and make happen what he has said. Can I declare? Every prophecy you are carrying over your head. Let him find fulfillment and manifestation in the name of Jesus. I would like us to pray. Will you take one or two minutes? We're going to pray in the spirit. If you have things you want to pray about, this is go ahead and pray. I've given you two scriptures you can anchor your prayer with. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Can I get a hand up? All of you online, let's go ahead and pray. Shame the Allah higher. Mango Sibola Mante. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I remember many years ago, Pastor Bojo was sharing a testimony about how they went on STV and they used all the money in the church. I mean, if this is your church, you know the story. They used all the money in the church to go on television. Then, I'm not sure if he told me this personally or he, told, he said it in a meeting. And he said... I will just come to my office and people will put checks in an envelope. They will put it at my door. Who told them they needed to pay television bill? Intervention. And these are things you need to hear. Some time ago, I noticed in our ministry, the income just dipped. There were reasons for it. I could explain it. But I just said, no, I, I don't want to take this. I, I, I think this can change. So I began to wake up very early i wake up very early already but i added another extra early and began to command the income to come up one day i just got to the office our chief accountant called me and said we have a problem he said there's a huge amount of money that someone brought to the office that he doesn't know if the other accountant can manage it long and short what had happened was this the largest amount of foreign currency i have seen the person brought it the accountant said, give us your name, let them call you. He said, I don't want name. I don't want anything. The day he came to the office, guess what happened? That was the day CCTV cameras did not work. Because I was like, okay, let me even check the camera and see who brought the money. They said, sir, we don't know what happened. It didn't work. 20 minutes after he left, it began to work. Is he a man? I don't know. Is he an angel? I don't know. But what I knew was overturned. Overturned. Until it became the turn of the person. This is my prayer for you today. That this year it will overturn. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen well. 
there's a principle called point of contact point of contact and one of the ways the point of contact is the way the power of god has been released it's released by words so hold on to the words this is my prayer for you today that the proof of god answering prayers it will litter everywhere in your life this year in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus everywhere you need intervention let the angel of god step into it let them step into it step into it in the name of jesus every sickness under the sound of my voice i rebuke in the name of jesus i command it to come out of their body i command every lump to disappear i rebuke the pcos every block fallopian tube opens in the name of jesus christ rejoice everyone and give him praise Let's put our hands together for Pastor Balaji. Amen. All right.